back girl welcome back to my channel okay side note how many of you actually still have a problem being called like a fat girl like being referred to as fat if you're fat okay if you're like very small or average size whatever like okay maybe I'm not talking to you but those of us that are like fat and are we're fat like mm, you know in between here girl I'm fat like how many of you still have a problem with that just curious um because like I, I'm not so concerned with it when someone's like Oh, that's, you know, you're a fat girl. Like, yeah, I'm a fat girl. Okay. Now tell them all the other types of girl that I am. I'm a cute girl. I'm a smart girl. I'm a working girl. Tell them all the types of girl. Um, anyway, that's off topic, but I know some of you are going to be offended by being called a fat girl, so <laughs> I don't apologize, but I just want to know why. Uh, so I'm here and I was in the shower a little bit ago, getting a little cleaned off. Broke my nail today. Sad face. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I was thinking, right, because now, uh, before you guys ask me a million times, I do have a lap band, and, uh, I got it, like, oh, shoot, almost eight years ago, and, um, I'm, I'm going through the first steps of having it removed, uh, and there's a long story, and yada, 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 I'm not going into it here right now, um, if I ever do a video on the entire experience, it'll be after it's completely done and over with, and it's gone, and... It, like, if it ever happens, it's going to be then. It won't be now. But on my vlog channel, which I am back to vlogging, guys. I haven't posted it yet, but I am, um, I am vlogging. Um, I'll be posting updates there and sort of the steps. And I'm telling you about what kind of insurance I have and what the process is and who I have to see and everything else. So I say all that to say this, okay? If you're interested in that, go to the vlog channel. That's where you'll find that kind of information. I'm not going to post it on the channel. Um, but I say that to say this. Yesterday... I went to the gastroenterologist because I had to get a referral and it's just like this whole big thing. Um, but anyway, I went and I saw him and um, when I went to the doctor, they weighed me. Now they always weigh me when I go to the doctor and I go to the doctor multiple times a year for whatever different reasons, whether I'm sick or whether I'm going to see like my um, gynecologist, which I was going on a yearly basis. Um, which I'll probably continue to go on a yearly basis. I know you don't absolutely have to, but I probably will just because of some of the things that run through the women in my family and um, also just because of the birth control and everything that I had. That was part of the reason that I was going every single year. Um, so my point is that I went multiple times a year and every single time that I went to the doctor, I would step onto the scale and they would weigh me. Now, about three years ago, I think the last time that I had looked at a scale was in October of 2000 and it was the year I broke up with the kid's dad. So... 13? 2013, I think? 2013 sounds right. Um, October of 2013 or 2014. I can't remember which year it was. Um, but anyway, that was the last time that I actually looked at the scale when I stepped onto it. And I think it said it, I was like 240 or something like that. Um, and I was like pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, I thought I weighed more than that. Um, like a few pounds more than that, you know? But I didn't. Um, and I felt good. I felt good. In that moment, I was like, look at me weighing a couple pounds less than I thought I weighed, right? And I realized that day that I was like, wow, you know, I always knew that I had an awful relationship with the scale. Don't get me wrong, that was not what I realized that day. But I realized that, um, I was like, okay, so that's the number that I saw. And it made me feel good in that moment. I don't know that it would make me feel good today or that it would have made me feel good six, seven, eight years ago. But in that moment, it made me feel good. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna savor this moment. And I savored it so hard because I never looked at a scale again. In all of the times that I have stepped onto the scale with the doctor and everything else, I had not looked at the scale until yesterday. I didn't even look at the scale. I looked at the paper. I was like, well, you know what, Sarah? Let's test how far you've truly come with your body positivity and your body confidence and how far you've come in this entire journey. And let's see if you can look at that number and not immediately revert back to the person that you always were, right? Because I don't know about you, but I have had a horrendous relationship with my weight my entire life. I have had an awful relationship with my scale especially because I would step onto the scale every single morning, in the morning, in the middle of the day, at night. Oh, I know you shouldn't do it all day. I know your weight's gonna change throughout the day. It, that doesn't matter to me. That didn't matter to me. I was obsessed with this number, right? And especially when I was leading up to getting the lap band because when I made the decision to get it, I was almost, I was damn near 300 pounds. Um, and then I slowly saw the number come down because I met with the nutritionist, I changed my eating habits, I changed, um, I changed the way I did everything and then I had a really like severe like two week liquid diet that I had to do which made me drop like 20 pounds in two weeks, in two weeks which felt really good to see the number um, but it was an awful feeling, it was an awful two weeks and I seriously, 
seriously hoping I don't have to do it again to get the surgery, to get it removed, but I'm thinking I probably will. Um, but whatever, I mean, I can cross that bridge when I come to it. And then after that, after I had the surgery, I continued to see the number go down. So it was always kind of nice to step on the scale because for the most part, it was going down. Um, and then I had kids and it went up and then I had lost, uh, you know, I had the baby and then I got pregnant again and it went up and then it went back down and so on and so forth. So it kind of has fluctuated in these last few years. Um, last five years, basically, I've gone up, I've gone down, I've gone up, I've gone down, I've gone up, I've gone down. And every time I went up, the way that I felt about myself went down. And every time it went down, I was still hard on myself. I wasn't as hard on myself as when I was going up, but I was like, wow, Sarah, like, okay, so you lost a pound this week. whoop de freaking do You need to lose another 120 pounds before you look like a normal person or before you're the size that your doctor says you're supposed to be. I think I'm supposed to be like 120 pounds or something, right? Like, because I'm 5'4", so I'm supposed to be 120 pounds. It doesn't matter where those pounds are. It doesn't matter what kind of pounds they are. Just supposed to be 120 pounds, something like that. Uh, maybe 130 to be like healthy, right? So if I'm 130 pounds, I'm healthy at this weight, or rather at this height. So um, I had this really horrific relationship with it, and I realized in that time where I was constantly looking at it, it was a daily thing, morning, noon, and night. I mean, eventually I cut back to just like morning and night. Um, of course, you want to weigh yourself in the morning because that's when you're the lightest, right? So I figured that out really quickly, uh, but. I had a really awful relationship with it because I realized that the number that was on that scale is the number that dictated how my entire day was gonna go. So if it had gone up even an ounce, then I was gonna have a bad day. I was gonna have such a bad day because all day I was just only gonna think about how I'm so fat, how I cannot control my body, how I cannot control myself, how I'm such an awful human being, how I'm so undeserving of anything. You do not realize how intense these feelings were. It didn't matter. I remember once um, I was in college and I remember that I had just found out that I had aced all of my classes. I think I was like a junior maybe and I had aced all of my classes. And This was such a big deal for me because I was taking, I had a full-time schedule and I had two babies. I had like a, a one-year-old baby and then like a, you know, however many months old Jay was at the time. And, um, you know, and I, my life was in shambles. My relationship was utter crap. Everything sucked. And um, I just found out that I had gotten straight A's, something that I had really worked hard for. And I would gotten like 100% on my final project. Um, in this one particular class, it was a huge struggle for me the entire year. And I was just so excited, right? And then I came home and for whatever reason, I think I was working on a post or something, a blog post or something with, it was like, a, like something that was sponsored. So I had to um, pretend what well, I was pretending kind of that night to go to the gym. Um, I just needed to get the pictures for the blog post. And I remember stepping onto the scale. And I remember I weighed like three pounds more than I thought I weighed. And it was crushing. I mean, I was in tears. It didn't matter how well anything else had gone. It didn't matter like that huge spike, something that I had worked months and months and months and months for, something that I had stayed up late, I had lost sleep over, um, these classes, these projects and stuff, right? It didn't matter. It didn't matter that I had finally achieved exactly what I had been working towards because I was three pounds heavier than I thought I was. And that's all that mattered. And that number trumped everything else. That number trumped every hour that I spent working and every hour that I didn't sleep because I was taking care of my kids and I was going to school and I was doing everything that I possibly could do to earn $50 here and there for my blog. Like it didn't, no, that number trumped any other number in my life. And it was, oh man, it was such a horrific relationship that I had with my skill all this time. So yesterday, the whole reason that I'm even making this video is because I'm sure that some of you can definitely relate to this. And while I'm sure some of you don't think that it's a good idea to not ever look at the scale because then what you're gonna balloon or you're gonna get I mean hey you might get smaller and not be able to give yourself the pat on the back right um, but you might get bigger and not be able to punch yourself in the face the way you really want to right the thing is I still have a record of my weight so if I want to know hey was I gaining weight here um, you know, I can think back to, okay, what was the difference in 2015 versus 2016? I can tell you what the differences were in my lifestyle. I can tell you what the differences were in the way that I was eating. I can tell you what the differences were in terms of my stress level and just sort of, sort of like how I was living my life. So I can revert back to my actual chart and see, hey, when Sarah came in in May of 2015, she weighed this much. When she came in in October of 2015, she weighed this much. When she came in in February of 2016, she weighed this much, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, another thing that I used to do 
uh, especially in the beginning, is I would step on the scale and I would take a picture of it and I would take that picture. I wouldn't ever look at it. I would just take that picture and I would hide it. I could stick it in a private album in my phone. So it was not something that I referred back to, but it was a record. So if you're not someone who goes to the doctor the way that I go to the doctor, um, then that was a way for me to refer back to my weight if I ever needed to, if it was ever something that really needed to be brought to my attention, basically. So um, yesterday when I stepped on that scale, I am not the same weight that I was in October of 2014 or 2013 or whatever, I knew that. My body looks different. I can see a change in my body. I can see that it looks different. Um, and I, I'm very in tune with my body when it gets bigger and when it gets smaller and when things are changing and when they're not or whatever. Like, I'm very in tune with my body at this point. Um, dude, have you guys ever done like naked yoga in front of the mirror? Just like on your own, you know what I mean? Like, yo. You, I love the way that my body looks when I do that. Like, because it's just rolls and it's just crazy. But like the way, you know, when I get into certain positions, like the way that my body looks, the way that my legs look, like the way that my butt looks, the way that my arms look, it's such a fascinating thing. It really makes me appreciate my body. It makes me look at my body in a way that I've almost never seen it before. So I can really see the changes. You know what I mean? Um, so I have, a, I have a mental record of the changes in my body when it goes up and down and everything else in between. Uh, so yesterday when I finally saw that number and I saw that it was significantly different than the other number, um, you know, I, I thought it was gonna crush me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that even after all these years, after all these Dear Fat Girl videos, after all of this body positivity and all this confidence that I exude on the internet, I thought that after all these years, it was still gonna crush me the way that it always has. And that's why I have still to this day been avoiding it. And you guys often ask me, Sarah, how can I be confident? How can I be like you? Listen, you don't know what I think about. You don't know what goes through my mind. You don't know the feelings and the thoughts that I have about myself. You have a vision of me, essentially. You have crafted whatever you know you want me to be. You have created that in your mind. What you think of me is not the same thing as what someone else thinks of me, or what some you know someone else or someone else or someone else thinks of me. Everyone who has come to my videos, who has supported me and everything else, you guys have needed me for different things and you have taken different things from me. And when I deliver a message, I deliver one message. I deliver the one message that's in my brain. And when a million people watch that, a million people will receive a different message. Everyone is receiving their own message. So when you guys are asking me how can I be confident like you, don't ever worry about how to be confident like me because you still don't know the things that are going through my mind. You still don't know the struggles that I face. You still don't know the things that I have to deal with on a constant daily, hourly, minute basis. You don't know. So I wanted to share this. I wanted to share this insecurity. I wanted to share this problem, this thing that I'm still trying to work through myself. And so yesterday was a test for me. And it was a test that I wanted to share with you guys because I feel like I've reached a new level, I was able to step on the scale. I was able to look at the number that the nurse wrote down. And then after she wrote it down, she left the room. And I got up and I got back on the scale because I wanted to see it. I wanted to see the little thing go around. I wanted to see where it landed. I wanted to see it with my own eyes, my weight creating this. I wanted to see it because I wanted to see if I could handle it and I could. I didn't come home and hate myself. I didn't. I can't lie and say that it didn't make me think more about how much I miss going to the gym. And being sick this last month has sucked. And being out of town all the time sucks because it throws me off my routine. And like feeling like I'm constantly sort of overwhelmed with the kids and with their school stuff, with my main channel, with my vlog channel, with the podcast now. Like I constantly feel overwhelmed and I always want to be able to make time for me, for my friends, for my family, for um, these other relationships that I have in my life. And it's, it, it just always, like I'm always wishing that there were more hours in the day. Like all the time I'm always talking to my brothers about this. Like yo, if we could get like three more hours between like 10 and midnight, I wouldn't hate it. You know what I'm saying? Like an additional, if you could throw some more in there. I don't need any of those daytime hours. I'm good with that. I need some of them nighttime hours, right? Like, cause I would love to be able to sleep and be the best of me in every other aspect of my life, but it's so difficult. So I can't lie and say that it didn't make me think about my body and it didn't make me think about how much um, I wish I could get to the gym more because I really do enjoy the feeling that I get after uh, doing cardio. Cardio is like so much fun for me. I love it, okay? Um, but um, I can't say that it didn't make me think of my body, but it didn't make me hate my body. It didn't make me go out into the world and feel like nothing else that I've ever accomplished matters because I'm fatter than I ever was before. I, I can tell you that it didn't make me hate myself and it didn't make me think less of myself and it didn't make me think myself less worthy and it didn't make me feel like mm, maybe maybe this this really, you know maybe maybe the person that I'm with doesn't really like me maybe he doesn't really love me maybe he thinks my body's disgusting yada 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 like it didn't send me down this awful path of thoughts that I used to it still made me 
aware of my body but not in a negative way so I just wanted to share this story with you guys I don't know if this will help you or not this I didn't really have uh, a solid point to drive you know home for you guys this time I want you to feel good about yourselves I don't want you to break yourselves or make yourselves feel like you are unworthy of anything in this world just because of the number on the scale whether it's a high number or a low number whatever you feel is a high number or a low number um, I just don't want you to let that affect your entire day if you are trying to make a big change in your body or a big change in your health, I mean, these things take time. They take lifetimes. Like, you're not just who you are today. I mean, you need to think about your body in a grand sort of scheme, right? You need to think about your body throughout your life. So my body's gonna continue to change and sometimes when, if something's bothering me, if my back hurts, like I mentioned I had a bunch of epidurals and so I thought maybe that was part of the reason I had back pain, but I mean, in addition, I'm sure carrying extra weight is not helpful to that. Like, I ain't no damn fool. I'm aware of that. So, um, you know, I do other things to try to help out try to help my, my back pain or whatever because it's not something that's just gonna go away on its own or ever go away really, but um, you know, it's, it is up to you to, to try to make changes in your life if that's what you wanna do. But I also say that you are you. You own you, your body is yours. If you are a fat girl or an unhealthy girl, whatever that means, right? And you don't wanna do anything about it, that is completely up to you. I'm not here to judge anyone or to tell anyone what to do. I just wanted to share my struggle and something that I feel like, you know, I've, I've managed to, to get over. It's been great. It was such an amazing thing to be able to look at a scale and not want to like throw up and not hate myself afterwards. Even though the scale didn't reflect a positive change, right? I was just, I'm proud of myself. So <laughs> I hope that um, this, this is something that you guys can relate to. I'm sure some of you can. Um, let me know. Let me know about your relationship with the scale and how things are now and maybe some things that have helped you because there are always people in the comment section that need help and there are people that are always just kind of lurking and no one ever comments but you're watching the videos and I always appreciate the support but I understand that you guys also need support yourselves. So I love when you guys leave your stories in the comment section so that other people can read them too and other people can be affected by them and changed by them. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you very soon in another one. We are finally sort of getting over the sickness. I'm definitely still stopping to have really disgusting coughs, um, but I managed to film this whole video without doing it, so yay me. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you wanna see any more Dear Fat Girls. And I think that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Also, little side note real quick. Some of you have been trying to cover my eyebrows lately because you're saying that they're two different colors. Just so you know, there's a light source directly in front of me, and there's a light source to the side of me. There's no light source on this side, so it's in a shadow. So this side is more illuminated, so it makes this side look different than this side. But like, do you understand how shadows work? Because they're the same. And I don't appreciate you guys coming in my eyebrows. I've been on YouTube all these years, ain't nobody talking about my eyebrows. All of a sudden, you want to talk about my eyebrows? I'm not ready for that kind of torture. Okay, bye.